Welcome to the Barstool College Football Show Week 14 Conference Championship Week. We are back here in Chicago after one hell of a weekend in Ann Arbor last week. Dave, I know you're still probably feeling pretty good about what Michigan did last week. Wrong. Wrong. Mm. Looking forward to the Big Ten Championship. The rearview mirror. Uh, I expected to win. We won. We took care of business. We beat the inferior team like a drum for the third straight year. Um, we're moving forward. Losers look back. I'm looking forward. Ev, how are you feeling over there? Um, dead. I mean, it's just the worst. I mean, I'm this this Buckeye flu is getting a little too familiar. It's getting it's feeling too familiar the last few years. It just stinks. I mean, it's it was a little different than last year. Like we, it was a coin flip game. I mean, we made the turnovers were the difference. It was. Well, it wasn't a coin flip game. I don't want to talk about it, Evan. I'm no, it was a coin flip game. Like you. No, it was a I coin think flip people, game. I think people know I like you, and I don't like to see you hurt and, and suffering. It wasn't a coin flip game. We made every big play we had to make. You made none of the big plays yeah, you had to so make. So it took you it to play perfect. It wasn't a coin flip game. We beat your ass. So it took you for you to play perfect to win is what, you're, what you really just said. You had to play absolutely perfect to beat us is what we you just said. made every big play, fat boy. So, so what you said, you had to play perfect to beat us. That's not what I said. Every big play was made by Michigan. It wasn't a coin flip. If we played 100 times, every big play would be made by Michigan. You can't beat us. Yeah, I mean, that's just not. See, now, like, the, you the, can't the little your sticks were cute. Now you're just talking out your ass. I, well, you what? won. You got it. You get, you know, you get to the victor. Gets well, what was wrong, get to, what is not true about what I just said? That you didn't beat the shit. It was a coin flip game. That's a fact. I mean. Ev, we, we, you were you until the time, until the final minute. Time. You were sitting in a puddle of sweat. Whether you're going to win or lose the game. Every play we make, we're Michigan. You're not. Deal with it. Mm. I mean, I'd, I, uh, I okay. So so uh, neutral party here for Buckeye Brandon and Big Ev. I've said nothing, but uh, but for Buckeye Brandon <laughs> and Big Ev, I have made the uh, claim, and I actually think it might be true. I've thought about it. Um, there's maybe a couple other points in history you can look in sports. This might have been the worst loss in, in for a fan base ever because this was a skins game. This was a football golf skins game where it was basically Ohio State was playing for not just this year but the last two years, and if they had won this game – Essentially, everything would have been erased, and Ohio State and Buckeye Brandon and Big Ev would have been able to say, none of this mattered. You guys cheated. When you didn't cheat, we, you know, the, the universe was restored back to its regular place. Ohio State's better than Michigan. That didn't happen. It's got to be the most painful thing ever. Like, it really yeah, is. Can I ask they you, beat them straight can up. Can I ask you what I just asked Ev? Because you're the only unbiased one here. I know Buckeye Brandon. If these teams played a hundred times, we're beating them a hundred times. We make the plays. They don't. Like that's what. A, what a they had the ball at the thirty-five yard line. Say. They had the ball at the thirty-five yard line, down six. You were too nervous. You couldn't even sit on the fucking couch. You were walking around behind us. You like, were so you're nervous. Just, you're talking out your ass right now. You're lying. Is what he's doing. Yeah. He's lying. What are we talking? Like, what are we talking about? If he like a drum, we were like driving with the ball to win the game. If, if unbiased, 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 if they played a hundred times. And Ryan Day is the coach for Ohio State all 100 times. I think Michigan wins 70 times. Because Ryan Day oh, has found a way. Right, no, because Ryan Day oh. has not been able to figure out how, like, he plays a conservative game. He doesn't have any extra juice for this game. Like, the Michigan guys, you can see it. This rivalry means something. Urban Meyer, I've always said it, Urban Meyer's best thing that he ever did yeah. was getting guys from Florida and Texas and California to hate Michigan. Guys who have no reason to hate Michigan to make that rivalry mean something. Ryan Day has not been able to do that. That's his biggest problem. They don't play with that edge okay, but, that Michigan has. But on so top, what, what is Ryan Day going to do to make his quarterback not make two mistakes? That's why, literally the difference in the game. But, the quarterback made two mistakes. But, well, I, I don't even think the second so one was dumb. a mistake. No. You got but what do you, like that, no, that, it, that was the difference. What's like, Ryan Day going to do? It was a clean listen, game versus the two here, turnovers. The that was the difference. The here's the difference in the game, Buckeye Brandon, Big F. Eight minutes to go. And we took seven minutes and 30 seconds off the clock. That was impressive. Running it down your fucking throat. That was impressive. So when you're like, oh, with a last minute drive, the clock was against you with no timeouts. You barely got the ball back. That is a team that kicked the snot out of you. Okay. How do you not get that? If you're so good, you get the ball back. And we took the ball. We got, if you're so, and, we got the ball back. What do you mean? So we got the on, ball back. Hold on. And the, the other big difference. So you can point to turnovers. That's fine. Ryan Day at the end of the first half. When he has a fourth and two in plus territory and whatever it was, 35 seconds left in a timeout in his back pocket, 
did chicken shit football. He's like, I don't trust my offense to get a first down here. I have Marvin Harrison. Go. These are the type of moments that you have to take. You can't just sit back and say, we're going to let this kicker, who's never kicked a, a kick over 50 yards, in a rivalry game, cold wind, all the things that are in it. He's like, I'm going to have this kid, the kicker, try to do something he's never been able to do before instead of trusting Marvin Harrison Jr. and trying to take this moment and take this game instead of just passively sitting there <laughs> well, and being like, all right. Well, that's a good okay, point. Thank God that's why no, here's, that idiot over there. Here's, here's I can't a, believe we're having this conversation. No. Michigan has punted once that's in the second half in, in three, three years. fucking years. Yeah. So that, the that fuck up, fuck up, Brandon and Fat Boy. But we're talking about this game, no, no, no. this game, not the last two games. We're talking about this game. In 40 years, no, Notre dude. Dame, when you guys played Notre Dame, your new rivals, stick with them. They went for it twice on fourth and one, I believe. Didn't get it either time. Three for three on fourth down. Up the fucking middle in your face, Fat Boy. Stop saying you belong on the same field with us. One punt in three second halves. This defense, that's all Buckeye Brandon talked about. One punt in three years of the second half. Get the hell out of my face. We're on to the playoffs. To Dan's point about Ryan Day, the last three years, he has not figured out what adjustments in the second half to do against he, Michigan. Like, it's not just this year. It's the past three years. Ryan Day, look Ohio at, State. Look at Buckeye Brandon. He knows was, he just got yeah. run over. No, here's, I don't know what Ryan Day was it, supposed it, to do this, this time. Is, no, but no the, what, that but the end of the half is what, what I'm Fine. talking about. But the second half adjustments, Ryan like, Day's, they played well in the second Ryan half. Ryan Day's issue Brandon. is he, Ohio State is it recruits at such a level and is so good of a team that Ryan Day can go out there for – all the other 39 Big Ten games he's won and win them by just letting the guys play ball. Yeah. When you play Michigan, you have to have something special. You have to have – you have to go take the game. He has not been able to do that. He has a problem with that, and that's why they are now three years in a row getting beat by Michigan. Michigan Somebody, Buckeye Brandon or Big F, please explain to me how Ohio State has forced one punt in the second half in three years and think you have a shot at beating us. Someone explain that. We biased. literally had it. Like, what are you? We had a shot at beating you at the end. Like, what are you talking about? Your the last two years don't matter. We're talking about this game. Ball back with like five seconds to go. No, it was a there was a minute. minute. Was a like, minute. you're just it like, there was a full minute. You're lying. You're lying. There's a full Absolutely. minute and the uh, clock hit. stops after timeout or after first downs. That's an eternity in college football. Yeah, I like you. I don't want to have to keep beating you into an uh, inch of your life. Okay, so let's move forward. I, I think I made the mistake of asking Dave how he idiot. felt. He's an idiot. It's crazy. Like, I mean, he said like he it's a, it was a coin flip game. We lit, like, it was not mess. a coin flip game. Yes, it fucking – we had the ball. You were sweating your dick off with a 30 seconds left like you were going to lose. Yeah. That like, what are we talking about? Robbery it was not a blowout. Was a they did not run away with it in the fourth game. quarter. We had the ball to win the game. They got yeah, some pressure up the middle. He made a bad throw, like and that was the game. game. It felt like you almost stole it, and you didn't. You didn't deserve that game. Okay, let's we, move like, forward. Oh. I feel like we could do an entire episode on this, but let's move forward because we well, do have. Well, it's disgusting. They're ruining our credibility. These two idiots. This fucking battle. still going to get embarrassed in the playoff. Okay. Oh, that's, so, I mean, yeah, Dave, you've got to win sure. a playoff game this year. You have year. to win a playoff Dave, game. Dave has I to win a Harbaugh playoff game. Harbaugh hasn't won a bowl game this decade. So we are going to talk about the Big Ten Championship. We're going to talk I about agree. that. I agree. I didn't even want to talk about Ohio. They're not worth my time or anything. That was your lead statement. All you no, I, that was my fault. Game. That was my I fault. I, I did ask him how he felt. I so. said I want, I said I'm looking forward, and I said it already. If we don't win a playoff game, this year's a disappointment. Okay, so the high noon game day package of the conference championship weekend, of course. How hard is it to get this TV to work? What is wrong with our tech? How much money do I have to spend to get an internet connection in that office? <laughs> so the high noon game day pack, everybody. The high noon El Prez pack. The tangerine, the number one flavor for a lot of people who have tried it. Of course, the, the limited edition game day pack is still out there as well. Go to highnoonspirits.com to find any of the packs near you. If you're having trouble finding it, they can help you get it. Obviously, it's available on Drizzly as well. Let's talk about the Pac-12 championship. So this show will be airing on Friday because this game tonight is massive. A lot of times the Pac-12 championship has not mattered when we've done this show, so we just kind of skip over it. But this one between Oregon and Washington, very, very big, Dan. I will start with you. So number five, Oregon. Mm -hmm. Number three, Washington. Oregon right now favored by nine and a half. That number has kept getting a little bit bigger. The over-under is 65 and a half. Now, obviously, people are looking at this nine and a half and saying, well, we've seen them play this year. Washington beat them in a shootout. But for some reason, people are thinking Oregon is that much better when they have this rematch. Where do you stand? Yeah, I mean, I thought Oregon was was better when when I watched the first game. I, I, I've talked about this on Pick'em, but I had a future on Washington at 
18 to 1, and then I cashed out for a profit after they beat Oregon and flipped to Oregon because I thought even though Washington won that first game, Oregon was the better team. And Washington's been kind of just like barely hanging on for the last month and a half. And it's their defense is not great. And they have to, they ask their, Michael Penix to do a lot and, and hit those big chunk plays. I think Oregon's going to beat them and, and actually beat them soundly. I think I, I'm going to take Oregon minus nine and a half. Brandon? Two very good teams. Uh, the winner's going, this is a playoff game. It basically right. is. But I do think Oregon's getting a little bit too much credit for what they've done. They have killed some teams. They have also haven't beaten anybody that is, that is better than 8-4. and four. Washington went 12-0 and 0 in a very tough Pac-12. They haven't looked that impressive since Oregon. But nine and a half is crazy. Washington wants to play a shootout style. Oregon wants to play a shootout style. I believe nine and a half is too many, and Washington keeps it within the number. I think Oregon probably wins. I think they're slightly better. They're not 10 points better. Dave? First of all, I want to apologize for getting that up. That I do care about Big F. I know he has nothing to live for, so I apologize, Big F. Um, okay. I actually right. here uh, am with Brandon. I, I think Washington's been wildly uh, disrespected. I am... The last two games has been a little bit of a different Washington defense, and they just seem to be doing whatever you need to do to win a game. And I like teams like that. You want to score a 50-point shootout, they find a way to win. They beat Oregon State low, which I don't think a lot of people expected. They are undefeated. I think they're going to feel very disrespected. Um, I think they're going to win the game. I got Washington. Uh, I'm going to take Oregon. I, I mean, I, I think it's a lot of points, but I've said, you know, throughout the last few weeks that there are a couple teams in this country I would not want to play right now. Oregon is one of them, the way that they've been playing. Not that Bo Nix needs any motivation, but the fact that the Heisman is on the line, I believe if he wins this game and plays really well, it is the Heisman trophy for him to lose. Um, so I'm going to take Oregon, but the fact that the Pac-12 is going away, this is the last Pac-12 championship and it's an ultimate playoff game. Uh, is awesome. It's bittersweet, but I think Oregon gets it done. Let's move to the big. It would be a fitting, fitting uh, if or if Oregon wins. Oregon most likely Michigan Rose Bowl or a classic Rose Bowl. That yeah, yeah, that would be very cool. Uh, let's move to the Big Twelve. Dave, I will start with you. Number eighteen, Oklahoma State versus number seven, Texas. Texas favored by fifteen and a half. The over under at fifty four and a half. And uh, this Oklahoma State team early in the season, we buried them. They looked awful. We're talking about should Mike Gundy be done in Stillwater, and of course Texas has. Outside we'll of that, talk about that here. Uh, no, I mean Oklahoma State looked awful. Not on this show, but when they lost by twenty six points to South Alabama and they were one and two, there were some there were some concerns out there. Okay, so maybe yeah, on other shows, maybe not on this show, but Oklahoma State obviously turned it around. We're able to get to the Big Twelve Championship, beat Oklahoma. Now Texas is sitting there. They don't get to avenge the loss against Oklahoma, Dave, uh, but they seem to be the better team going into this game. What do you expect to happen? Yeah, I'm so distracted. I know we'll have my recording. I just don't understand why we can't get a TV. Like, it's, I don't, what do we, a high school, Sass can, little Sass can record a podcast better in his apartment with his own equipment yeah. than Pete Overmeyer can with 3,000 producers and unlimited budget. It's hey, little Sass. Uh, um, this is a Bosco game for me. Because I liked Oklahoma State. I thought it was too many points. And then on pick them as Dan knows. He had this whole trap, like, oh, he's begging you to take Texas because it's so many points, and then he took Oklahoma State. So he, like, he set the trap for himself, mm -hmm. and they walked into the trap. So I'm going to take Texas because of that. Dan? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. He, he, Bosco did that to me where it's like, I, I do think it's too many points. So And he laid it all out, and then he just went and grabbed the cheese. So, yeah, I'm going to take Texas as well. Brandon? Texas defense is really good up front. Oklahoma State wants to run. They won't be able to. Texas also, it's been a grind and a fight ever mm -hmm. since the Alabama game, but now they see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think they just destroy Oklahoma State this week. Ev, you have a thought on this one? Uh, I would have taken Oklahoma State, but that the, the Rico spiel definitely gave me some pause there. But I guess I'll, 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 I'll take them for the sake of the show. I'll take Oklahoma State with the points. Yeah, I'll be honest. I was thinking about leaning Oklahoma State, but I feel like the Bosco trap. Not And I love Rico, but I don't want to walk into that one. But I do I think – I Rico. I like Rico. Mm. He's, he's a loyal dog. He's a good guy. <laughs> um, I do think Texas is figuring it all out. And, of course, like they are moving to the SEC. So this is the, the big chance for them to go out on top of the Big 12 and make it – potentially make it to the college football playoff. Let's go to the Big Ten. And of all of the Power Five games, obviously this one is probably the least exciting, the least sexy. 
Uh, Brandon, I'll start with you. Michigan versus Iowa. You know, Iowa 16 in the country. Michigan right now favored by 21 and a half. The over under at 34 and a half. And you know, a lot of people are saying that that 21. First, it moved down to 21. Yeah. It's 21 and a half. Yeah. At least that's open at what 23 and a half. Yep. Yeah. The wow. first half total for Iowa being 0. .5 is mm-hmm. very funny. Well, it's just, you know, football's about matchups, and Iowa matches up with nobody. But there's not a team in the world they match up with less than Michigan. I, I do think, I wonder if Harbaugh's just going to be a nice guy, but I, I like Michigan here. I like 24 nothing, 27-3, something like that. Iowa just can't score. There's, uh, if it were Purdue last year, and I know they got killed, but if it were somebody else that at least had a, a hint of an offense, maybe I'd go another way, but... Iowa can't score. Michigan is Michigan all day. I know we talked about it on the podcast, but you were saying you might take Michigan and the under, which is a very narrow it's window. A narrow window, yes. It's <laughs> it's not as narrow as it was, but it, it's a narrow window. But I I think it could be smart. Like under thirty four and a half sounds good. Michigan minus twenty one and a half sounds good. I twenty seven three, you know, is on the table here. Dan. Yeah, I'm gonna take Michigan as well. Harbaugh coming back, he's got something to prove. He's gonna, you know, when he has the guys and he has the thing, he'll 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 stick it to you. And yeah, it just doesn't. Iowa doesn't. How are they going to score? I don't know. They just don't have anything. And, and, and the one thing that Iowa can do to score is to turn the ball over. Michigan doesn't is pretty good with the ball. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be an ugly one. Dave, that line movement is crazy to me. That to me screams well, it's Iowa. Kind of, it's kind of a dead. It's kind of a dead zone. What do you mean? Like it never. It never. It never hit twenty four. It never hit twenty one. Yeah, still two point. Like yeah. who who in their right mind would pick Iowa? Yeah, it, it enough people picked Iowa that moved two points. To me, that's I, I like Michigan, but that's alarming to me. Uh, uh, the fan, I'm not going to this game. That shows the respect I have for Iowa. Uh, this is a don't get injured game. Mm-hmm. Uh, just get out of here intact. Um, I'll take Michigan, but that line movement is from just a strictly gambling perspective is quite alarming. Like who the hell is betting on Iowa? Even if you don't like Michigan, how can you like Iowa? Yeah, I'm going to take Michigan. I, Dan, I agree with you. I think Jim Harbaugh is going to come out and just never take the foot off the gas. Ev, I, are you going to bet on Michigan? Yeah, probably. I mean, they should they should beat the shit out of Iowa, just like D- uh, Dan said at Brandon. So they have no offense. I see it being like 35 to like no 6, offense. something I mean, like that. Point so five who is betting on Iowa? Yeah. yeah it's, well, it's, it could be someone trying to trying to get it to 21 and then hammering Michigan. Who knows? Just a bunch of Iowa fans just praying, I guess. I don't think they even know. Yeah, that's true. It's a good point. Yeah. I know, like you've you've got we have an Iowa fan right right here. Ryan's like, yeah, no. No. Um, okay, the ACC game, which a lot of people are circling because a lot of people don't want to see Florida State without Jordan Travis in the college football playoff. That's a whole different argument. But for this game, Brandon, I will start with you because I know uh, we've been talking about this a lot. Number 14, Louisville versus number four, Florida State. Florida State minus two and a half, the over under at 47 and a half. Florida State undefeated if they win this game, probably in the playoff. If Louisville beats them, the Florida State problem is over. Correct. Well, let's be honest. America needs Louisville to win this game. For a, for a good college football playoff, for two good semifinal games, the only hope we have is Louisville winning this game. Louisville got embarrassed last week against Kentucky. They had lost six in a row. They finally had the better team. Everything was going. Mark Stoops was trying to leave Kentucky, and they pissed down their legs. They got to be pissed off. Like if you if you're Jeff Brom, you have to come out and you got to win this game against a wounded Florida State. I like Louisville to win the game. Dan, I'm going Florida State. I you know I know it's going to be a problem. People are going to bitch and moan. I, I Florida State's a better team. I know that Rodemaker is not Jordan Travis, uh, but I I just I've not I'm not buying Louisville all year, and I just think Florida State like they, talk about disrespect. Everyone's basically writing them off and saying mm-hmm. they're they're dead. They've had an undefeated season to this point. I think they're going to win this game. Yeah, and Tate Rodemaker, I mean, I know that the, the Florida game was very close, but he's, I mean, it's not like he's never played before. He has right. some experience. Right. He's just terrible. No, he's just not good. He's yeah. just not good. But it's not like he, I, I, I feel like a lot of people are saying, well, he's just so bad that they have to keep him out of the playoff. Again, that's a bigger conversation, but he's serviceable. Now, I do think, I'm going to take Louisville to win this game. Uh, I believe that they will, not because I want that necessarily, uh, but I just, I think that they are going to come out in this game and Florida State's finally going to be like, yeah, you know, we don't have our guy. We're just not as good without him. Um, so I'm going to take Louisville. Dave, what do you think? I think Florida State wins this game, not sold on Louisville at all. Football's a team sport. Mm-hmm. I, I do not think Florida State ruins the playoff at all. I don't penalize injuries if you persevere. Beat Florida, beat them. They deserve to go. So, and I think they're going to win. 
and you won't hear a complaint from me about it. Let's go to the SEC championship. We'll have more on that in a little bit. Though. Yeah, I know. I, I will as too. That's why I, I kept it moving because I know that this conversation will come back. The SEC championship, number one, Georgia versus number eight, Alabama. Georgia favored by six. The over-under at 54 and a half. Dan, the end of the Iron Bowl was insane. Jalen Milrow with that fourth and 31. Hail Mary, which was phenomenal. Uh -oh. Close game. He's about to cook, Casey. Oh, I know he's about to cook. You, you did this. Well, no, 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 no. I'm oh. not cooking. No, no. no this they, is they, a big game, game for you. Was insane. Yeah, no, this yes. is a big game for me. The Auburn defense at the end of that game, I, I will never understand what the hell they were doing. They had a, a QB spy on the 31-yard line. They were rushing two. Uh, just so, so stupid. Like, I would rather a zero blitz yeah. than what they did. Because yeah. at least you got to make them make a decision quick. Give yourself a chance. Yeah. Sending two guys will never make sense to anybody. Yeah, I'm I'm taking the over. It's my game of the year. Uh, I've already placed the bet at 54 and a half. Both these teams can score. Both these teams, the SEC championship has had points historically. I think it's 12 out of the last 14 have gone over. Uh, Georgia's offense is really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I think Alabama might be in a little bit of a catch-up mode. The only thing that scares me about this game is like Jalen Milrow playing a little bit of hero ball. Uh, can he do that against Georgia? But yeah, the over is my game of the year. Brandon? So this is the first time they've met since Kirby finally conquered the, the, the beast, right? And then they're meeting again, and I think Alabama has taken every bit of effort and scratching and clawing to get back to here. And I think Georgia is significantly better. They have a fuck you mode that Alabama does not. I think Georgia wins this game by multiple touchdowns. Also, I forgot to mention one thing, and it's not the most important thing, but... Uh, the defensive coordinator for Georgia did get the job at Syracuse. Mm -hmm. He's taking some of his guys with him. Yeah. They're going to be able to do both at the same time, but that does matter a little bit. Like, a little you bit. Have to, when, you, when you're starting a new job and you're, and you're working on your old job, like it's not a huge deal, but it's also not nothing. The thing about Jalen Milrow is the way he gets you, he gets around the edge, he scrambles, he makes throws, or he runs, and Georgia has the fastest defense mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the strength, whether, and Kirby's always got a next guy up mentality as far as defensive coordinators, I believe, or at least I hope, I think Georgia, again, significantly wins this game. And we looked at every position group earlier this week, and, and it's hard to find one that Alabama may even have the edge on Georgia. Now, obviously, defensive they're both Defensive line, Alabama's good, really good, but, but you're right. Georgia has an edge at a lot of places. Dave, who are you taking? Georgia and the over. I haven't been sold on Alabama and the quarterback the whole season. He got hot a little bit, but you know, I don't I don't know how you learn how to throw in a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm taking Georgia in the over and uh they're a good football team. I got my eye on them, I tip my cap to them. They're the kings of college football for the last two years for sure. This year they haven't lost. So yeah, they're a great team and I have nothing but respect for the Georgia Bulls. Ev, a lot of people have talked about, you know, is Kirby now the best coach in college football? But, you know, you do have Nick Saban saying they're probably wanting to remind him a little bit uh, who is the king of college football. Are you taking Georgia or Alabama? I, I like Georgia in the over as well. I think everyone's talking about Milrow. No one's talking about Carson Beck. He's so yeah. good. He, I think he's had good an player. unbelievable year. He's only gotten better the years gone on. Even the game for Bowers was out. He still was playing very well. So, yeah, I like Great Georgia. quarterback. Georgia in the over. Yeah, Carson Beck is phenomenal. I'm going to take Georgia as well. All right, Brandon, it's time for your trivia. I, we don't have the whiteboards. That's okay. That's all right. Y'all can all answer right. it. So uh, this will be the last Pac-12 game, unless there's a miracle. Some, maybe we have one sooner or later. I don't know. This will be the last Pac-12 championship game. Which two teams played in the first ever Pac-12 championship game? Mm. That is your question. Mm -mm. Which two teams you played, played on campus in the first ever Pac-12 championship it's definitely game? Definitely Stanford. No, it was, it was definitely Oregon. If you guys would like the year, I'll give you the year. I think it's like, what, like Stanford, Oregon. years ago? I feel like it was at Stanford. 2011 was, like was the first year. This is going to be Oregon. No, Stanford and nobody went. I do remember that year. I, I'm going to say Oregon. I don't know the other team. Stanford, Oregon. So it is – Oregon is correct. Stanford has gone to four Pac-12 title games. They're second. Um, but the first year was 2011, and it was uh, Oregon 49, UCLA 31. Well, Michael James? Uh, I believe so. It was the year after they played for a national title. Darren Thomas? Yeah. It was the year after that. Yeah. It's crazy. Like the Those Oregon teams, teams are fun. Not, so fun. It's not been around that long at all, and now it's just gone. Yeah. It, yeah, it didn't start until 2011. Right, and now it's just yeah. dead. Sad. Let's go to the Pizza Hut Hut takes of the week. Pizza Hut may not have invented pizza, but they sure made it famous. Whether it's a team celebration or just a casual get-together with friends, no one out pizzas the hut. Order now. Dave, what is your hut take for week 14? So I, I'm the only one on the show on this panel that has to deal with this, but it is absolutely unfair. 
portaling should not be allowed to start until the college football season is over. It's so unfair for teams like Michigan, for example, who are in the playoff and going to the Big Ten Championship, have all this stuff going on, and p- players are getting recruited and switching. That's fucking illegal. It should have af- there should be no portaling till the day after the national championship. Brandon, that was a deep sigh. No, there was no sigh there. It was just uh, you I know. Mean, I kind of agree about know- these conference championship. Yeah. They like, know I'm right. I mean, it's crazy. But they are waiting until yeah. conference championship. Oh, they are. It doesn't okay. open until the day after the conference championship. Oh, okay. Then I'm so talking I don't know that. what he's bitching yeah, about. Yeah, no, then I, I don't care about what he's saying. Yeah, what do you mean whining. you don't know what I'm bitching about? You're just whining to whine. But I thought I saw some guys say they were going to the portal. Their intention to go to the portal. Uh, it's yeah, up to them to announce. It's one of those, like, yeah. uh, the, the, free the dead area and yeah. free agency. Yeah, there should be no, you can't announce, you can't do anything. But all they're saying is when it opens up, we're going to go in. after the national Some teams are preparing to win a national title. You're you going to take away guys' free speech to announce what they want to announce? They can announce whatever they want to announce. Nothing. There's no free aid. Nothing. Brandon, you know I'm right, but you never have to deal with it, so you won't change the rule. No, you're not right. You're wrong. There's Why? things called semesters in college football. There's things called academics. So these guys got to get to where they're going next. We're going to wait till January 9th and then open up the transfer portal? That's not how things work in college. Yeah, like these guys, the guys in the portaling really care about that. I, some of them do. Yeah. Dan, what's your hot take? My hot take, actually, going back to the uh, last Pac-12 championship game, I think we will eventually get back to exactly where we where we are right now with uh, conferences. So it reminds me a lot about uh, streaming. We go from cable to streaming. Now we have all these streaming services. We bundle all the streaming services. Hey, what the fuck? We have cable again. I think we're just going to get to a point in the next five, ten years where we we do get like these two or three power like big conferences. And then they just start putting them in geographical spots where it's like, okay, Oregon and Washington are in the Big Ten. Well, they play in the Big Ten West and, like, all these things. So we're just going to get back to where we were, and it will be fine. I'm not worried is that, pretty much my point. Going back to, like, north, south, east, and west, like, That's regional all would, be, yeah. would be awesome. Like, oh, yeah, these five teams are, are within the same state, you know, a couple states. They'll all play each other. Great. And then they'll play in a, a tournament, and, you know, to, to see who wins the, the conference. And it'll, then we'll play in another tournament to see yeah. who wins the whole thing. It's going to be the NFL. It'll just be weird for a few years, but it'll yeah. figure itself out. All right, Brandon, your hot take. All right, my hot take is this. It is great that you guys want to give everybody a participation trophy, and it's great that everybody wants to reward a team for going 13 and don't go to the playoff. But my hot take is Florida State, in its current condition, belongs nowhere near the college football playoff. It sucks what happened to them. It sucks Jordan Travis got hurt. This current team is not 13-0. and They are 1-0, and and they play Louisville this weekend. What's going to happen if you put them in instead of a worthy team? Like, I don't know who's back there with one loss. Let's say Texas gets left out. If you leave out Here Texas. Go, football, Buckeye Brandon making his case. For Texas? For nope. fucking Texas? Shut up. Dummy. What did I just call you? You called me Buckeye Brandon. I was making the case for Texas, and you called me Buckeye Brandon, you dumb fuck. Yeah, now no. I'm going to keep talking. So no. you've got – if you I leave Texas out and you put Florida State in, what you do is – and you should be against this, by the way, Dave, because if number two seed Michigan is playing number three seed Oregon and fucking number one seed Georgia gets to play Florida State, they get a bye week. They don't even have to prep. They can prep for you guys. I don't know why I you want that. I can't disagree with this take more – if my, then I am. That's, yeah. fine. That's fine. You can disagree with it. No, it's a terrible take. It's not, it's not it's a terrible, terrible take. take. This team is not 13 and 0. This team is 1 0. This team is 1 0. Let me ask you a simple question. When Mississippi State had Dak Prescott, if they go undefeated that year and Dak Prescott gets hurt right before the SEC championship game, what would you be saying? I would absolutely be arguing the, the opposite, but I would know in my heart. I would know in my heart. The if games. We get, I would know in my heart if we get there. Matter. If we get there, the games have to matter. What's teams the have point? to matter. No, what's the point of playing the season if yeah, the games don't matter? The first eleven games were not this team. But it doesn't matter. Team. The games have to matter. You're going to reward a team. Football's a team sport. You're One guy doesn't make the whole team. It's the quarterback crazy. does. No. You know it does. No, you know this team. Mat- d- no. You know if this team plays Cardell Georgia, Jones. What's going to happen? Cardell they Jones. They don't have a Cardell Jones. Okay, but I'm they saying. They don't have one. So but I get it. But Cardell Jones won the national title. If they had a Cardell if Jones. If you had the same rule, you would have said, well, Ohio State can't be in the playoff because they don't have their starter. The games have to matter. They all, Cardell Jones also. 
one, AJ they, McCarthy they, gets hurt, McCarthy. Michigan's out. It's like crazy. I, I, they barely should be in anyway. So Ohio State, when they had Cardell Jones. No, I know they kicked the shit out of Wisconsin. 59 we nothing. Down on them. Did you they see Tate in. Rodemaker last week? He's not that it guy. It doesn't matter. The games have to matter. Otherwise, you're, but, you're not even playing a sport anymore. You're, you're just doing it. You're, you're doing, rewarding you're, a team. You're playing a computer. You're game. rewarding a team for something. For going 13 and 0. For something they used to be. No. For something they used to be. They're 13 and 0. For something they used to be. They have the loss. Hopefully, Louisville wins. But you're going to reward a team for something they used to be, and you're going to have a bad playoff. You, you are anti-sport. You're, you're going to have anti-sport. a bad playoff. You're anti-sport. Texas will be sitting there no, with you're a win over Alabama, and we're going to put in a triple team. Sit, you want to sit with Excel spreadsheets like a nerd. Let's and just put a like, triple oh, team Let's just in put it. these two teams so when they look like the best. It's 59-3, to three, Georgia. Don't care. You don't Doesn't care at all. Matter. Games have to matter. It, I, so my hot take is, uh, just add into this, I think there is 0% chance they can leave Florida State out because you cannot take one guy off a roster and say in a Power 5, if you win the conference They're not going to leave. Leave him out. That's not no. a hot take. I didn't. No, 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 I agree. No, they're no. not going to leave him out. Oh, I thought you said that you think there's. That's a chance. not what I said. I said they belong. But you told near me the you playoff. think there's a chance they leave him out. I believe they're that they are they belong no nowhere near the playoff. I think they no. will. They win. They're in. No. Yeah. Okay. We've had this argument on necessary roughness, and I've been told multiple times that I'm wrong for saying they're not going to be left out. They, Fine. Whatever. They win. Though. They got to be in. I mean, yes, I agree. The have to they win. Out. They're in. There's no brands just saying they shouldn't. Which, like Dan said, you might as well just play a computer game. What's the point? It's it's this is it disincentivizing the entire sport of football. Like, why would we even play a season? The games have to matter. They, they have to. They matter. went eleven zero with Jordan Travis. I understand, but the games that have was to their matter. Team. They are a team. That's they, fine. If they go undefeated, that team you cannot Such say. A stupid take. Oh, if they win, if they, if they win Florida State, if they if they beat Louisville, you're just going, mad because there might be a blowout in the playoff. Who fucking? If cares? they win, they're going to get in, and it, it is going. To, there's going to be better teams left out, so they can get in. Great, they shouldn't have lost the game. Games matter. They shouldn't have lost. They should play the ACC matter. then. Games matter. Games matter. All right. They can fine. only win the games that are on their schedule, whether if the ACC is down or not. I feel like I'm taking crazy. Okay. Well, none of y'all complain when we're sitting there on December 30th. I don't. And, I mean, I, I'll bet it I, don't, I feel like the same. The TC, I thought TCU should be in, even though they lost to Kansas State, because they deserve to be there. That's a different argument, there. though. Because well, no, because but and TCU but, lost. But and that's they a different argument. That's a different argument. Because TCU totally was fully really healthy, and there weren't other teams to take that spot. They only got to keep that spot because right. there was the nobody biggest, else. The difference in the argument is that TCU lost, and I still thought, like, if you don't lose TCU in a power five. They're not. They're, that, they're in case your lost. argument is making no sense right now. That's, I that, mean, first of all. You're the, making a different team, man. That's, that's different. I Did we not all sit here and you said TCU is not going to play well in the college football playoff? That's TCU the argument you're making is that Florida with, State's not going to. It does. You're saying that Florida State is not going to play a good game in the college football playoff, which is the same thing you said against TCU. It doesn't fucking matter. They deserve yeah, to be maybe there. Maybe that does make sense. No, That's what I'm, that, no one lets me fucking talk. That's exactly. No, we're letting you talk. The problem is Florida no. State is we know. If you think a team is not going to play well in the college football if playoff Max and you're going to leave got, them out, and you're going to leave them out, you didn't think TCU was yeah. going to play well, if, so you said leave them out because no one wants a team. If Max Duggan had gotten hurt, then the point is. But they lost the game. But we can't. We can't. What Casey's point is, and I agree with, is you can't make a college football playoff based on like who you think is going to be the closest game. Right. right. That's all the I was trying to say. To Nobody matter. lets me finish my fucking games conversation. Games have to matter. They matter. If you don't lose an entire game in the Power Five and you're the conference champion, you cannot be left out. Even if somebody thinks you're going to lose this by a hundred fucking points. And it, and it yeah. goes even I further. Don't. It's the Texas Alabama thing. Texas cannot. Alabama cannot get into the playoff before Texas. Well, that's they, an argument that might be had soon too. But that cannot happen. The games have to matter. If they don't, then they're just basically saying the sport is a joke and in regular season it doesn't matter. It's an argument that could happen this weekend. Because how not, could but. you sit there as a committee and be like, "Well, we got to look at the data points and see which team's better." They played. Yeah. Texas beat Alabama. Yeah, no, the, there's there's like a – There's no point – there's no point in sports if you go by – Correct, the correct. No. Correct. Because the team minus one guy is still the like, team. Imagine being a Florida State player. You're undefeated. It's like, oh, we just got kicked out. We, we've done everything we can, but some fucking redneck from Mississippi is like, oh – Well, I'm not on the committee. I'm not on the committee, Dave. So if you were on the committee – I'm saying a hypothetical oh, oh, if you were. Games this was Brandon Walker's hut take. That's true. It was you guys a, can't it was emotionally a handle take. it. You no, got, it was a no I well, I mean No, I thought it was a hot spirited take. debate. It was. Yeah. It was. It was it's great. Spirited debate. Good job. Uh Ev, what's your hot take? Mine is listen, even after losing, Ryan Day will win national title before Jim Harbaugh does. Jim Harbaugh, if he has shown one thing, oh, if he has shown one thing, oh, no. he, shown one thing oh, no. he cannot oh, no. when he has time to prepare and another team has time to prepare, he will lose every time because he's a buffoon. He has not won a bowl game since 2015. He will not win a playoff game this year. And Ryan Dale will national title. I mean, that might be true just because Jim Harbaugh is going to be the coach of the Bears. 
I've also said that a few weeks ago. That I think I said that. that See, Dave, they've been coach's talking. Last game. They've been talking, Dave. He's gone. He's gone. Are y'all still sure you're going to get a new coach? Yeah. Okay. I've also I, I'll say it. I've said it. Sharon, uh, Sharon Moore has as many. Yeah. Victories <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, Sharon Moore is the perfect replacement for Jim Harbaugh. He's got it in good hands. I've said it on many shows. I'll say it here on this show right now. That was good, Ev. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> if, if, Jim, if Jim Harbaugh is the coach of the Chicago Bears, I'm giving him lifetime immunity. I'll never criticize him. Lifetime immunity. Literal lifetime That's, immunity. No, no portaling, no tampering. Let's just – we got – like, we're – Lifetime immunity. Ev, that – while it might be true, it was sad. That was care. great. Okay. That was it's, great. It's, it's the, like, I mean, it's a hot take. It's the truth. Well, while we're talking about hot takes, Ev, do you think there's any way that Ohio State sneaks in? I mean, it would Texas have to lose. Uh, Florida State has to lose. Well, this is Florida like the changing of the seasons. Every single year we're here. Ohio State's fans look at the math groveling. It's pathetic. <laughs> no, what's pathetic is quitting your team like you were the Fairweather fan, running out of stream. <laughs> they were losing. Right, and you couldn't take the All right, uh, You'd leave. Uh, I'm here in the pocket. Man. I still oh, hear. I show up. Sorry. Are you going to lose I, a draw? I take I like a man. You leave because you're a boy. You're a crybaby. I am your biggest fan. I like. I just whatever makes you happy, big man. By the way, Big Ed, Washington might have to win. I don't. Th I think just the winners in, losers out. I guess that's my what I. Wa yeah, if, but Oregon, if Oregon would get beats yeah. Washington, and they put in all the other all the other things happen. If Florida State loses, if Texas loses, if Georgia loses, they could put Washington. They might put Oregon and Washington in. I don't think Texas they would. That game. That's right. Washington would have Alabama, more, right? Al no, if Alabama no, Georgia loses, wins. I'm saying they're, they're, no. We now have we need Georgia. You now have you have three undefeateds. Yeah. Or, or, or sorry, two undefeateds in in Michigan and Georgia, and then you have. Three one-loss teams in Oregon, Washington, Ohio State. Washington might – they might put in Oregon and Washington if that's a close game. Can we, like you might need – Washington, like Washington winning would be the better the circuits, outcome. The Big Ten I would agree with that, second. but – You see what I'm saying, Brandon? Yeah, they're, they're, I, I, Washington I, I, I lost. Like, why would, I, why would, Ohio, happen, though, yeah, but why would Ohio State automatically be in over Washington uh, if that's a close uh, game? Uh, <laughs> like, I think actually Washington needs to win for, for Ohio State to, uh, to – so we are, he's right, we are trying to create hoops where Ohio State can get in. Yeah, yeah but it's, Dave, it's... Dave just wants the clown music playing so bad right now. So it's a pretty, it's, it's a, a, I mean, I just, I'm it's not going to more quit. treacherous than you realize, I think. I think, you, I think you don't realize that Washington, a close loss for Washington would mean that Washington and Oregon could very well be in, in Ohio State. I, think I just think they put Ohio State in it, but I mean, act like a reach for it. I mean, if, if you're in a golf tournament, you're, you're, you want guys to miss the putt in 18 so you can go to a playoff. Like, I'm, it's, I'm doing the same thing. I'm hoping yeah. if you guys miss putts, we get a chance in the playoff. <laughs> Let's go to the Roback Dog of the Week. We are all wearing our Roback. I'm wearing the comfortable fleece. All the guys look great in theirs. You can I'm, I'm sorry, Casey. I didn't have my. I'm wearing my manifesto, uh, the Michigan manifesto. Humiliated uh, Ohio State. Humiliate Ohio State again. Repeat. That's actually the shirt. I don't well, see. I don't see when a playoff game on there. Well, because he's never done that. Yeah. They're losers. Uh, but your mannequin is wearing a robeback, so that is good. You guys can also all be outfitted in robeback. Go to r h o b a c k dot com. Use code football for twenty percent off your first purchase. That's twenty percent off all polos, shorts, hoodies, and more with code football. It is the holiday season. What is better than robeback, Dave? Who is your dog this week? I have two. I have a dog, like, oh, that guy's a dog. He's a fucking dog. And then I have a dog, like, this guy's pathetic. Uh, I'll start with the good one, J.J. McCarthy. Just played a perfect football game. An absolutely perfect football game. Made every right decision. Made not good, spectacular throws when they needed them. Drive-saving plays. He's a winner. There's no quarterback I'd rather than J.J. McCarthy heading into this. I'm very excited. What? Do you know a fun fact about J.J. McCarthy, Dave? What? He grew up an Ohio State fan. He wanted to go to Ohio State, but Ryan Day was too stupid. Yikes. I didn't know that. Yes. Yes. And he said he was like he felt personally like the way they treated him, he's like, fuck Ohio State forever. He said he wanted wow. to kill him. Yeah. Like a Joe Burrow, too. Interesting. Yeah. Um, what? Isn't he from around here? Yeah, he's from, he's from around Chicago. But, yeah, he, he wanted to go to Ohio State, and they took good, Kyle good McCord job. over him. Um, oof, yikes. Mm -hmm. Um, my dog on the bad side, Pete Overmeyer. Just that absolute disgusting display of a tech performance when we're spending all this money out of our own pockets being in Ann Arbor. Um, I talked to him. I know he takes it personal, 
But I don't know how after doing this for like a hundred years, we don't have a system. We're like, oh, this is broken. So yeah, just one of the worst performances you'll ever see from a tech guy, uh, Pete Overmeyer. Mm. Sad. All right, Dan, your dog. My dog of the week is Diego Pavia, New Mexico State. Uh, I love this kid. It, he shouldn't have been playing when they beat Auburn. He shouldn't have been playing last week. He's been banged up, but he keeps playing. They keep winning. I'm going to take him 10 and a half against Liberty in whatever. What is that? Conference USA? No. Yeah. Sunbelt. No, that's not Sunbelt. Uh, Conference USA? Conference USA. Yeah, Conference yeah, USA. Yeah, Conference USA. Yeah, Liberty. I got it. Liberty. I got it. Liberty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Ten and a half. Sunbelt is Tulane. Uh, yeah. Um, no, Sunbelt's not Tulane. No. So, what Tulane's am I like talking a, about? Tulane's like AAC. Yeah. Yeah, AAC. You're talking about Who's Sunbelt's Tulane? Troy, oh, App State. Thank you. Sunbelt. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. App State is definitely. Uh, set me up again. Uh, Brandon, who's your dog of the week? My dog of the week is new Mississippi State head coach Jeff Lebby, former Oklahoma Sooner offensive coordinator. Not a better offense in the country than Oklahoma. They were dominant this year. They beat Texas because of how many points they scored. He's going to score a lot of points here. Last year, I don't know if y'all saw it, Mississippi State's coach, Mike Leach, may he rest in peace, he died. And now we finally have a new coach to come score points, and we're going to restore the legacy of Mississippi State football. Jeff Levy is my guy. You are a noted well, what's Oklahoma What's that controversy offense? with him? What's that thing where he, like, was on the field and everyone got mad? Because- uh, he, his, he, he is the son-in-law of Art Bryles. Mm-hmm. And before the Good o- guy before an Oklahoma game, Art Bryles was on the field, uh, and and that that was controversy. But he's his son. Why was that controversial? Because Art Bryles exists, and it's, it goes back to the Baylor stuff from a few years ago. And what what's that stuff? Well, it was it, it really hard to know. It's been so long. I don't know if they archived all that in the on the internet, but it was some some stuff. But and yeah, why were people mad? That was a Baylor problem. That that happened at Baylor. That was that was in two thousand. So, that was twenty four. Will be on the sideline in Mississippi State? I doubt it. Yeah, I guess that's a question. Jeff Lebby's our coach, and that's right. But that's his father in law. Are you gonna? Uh, do you answer for everything that your father in law does? I don't answer to everything my father. I'm just asking does. a question. He's gonna be on the sideline. I don't think so. But okay. that's not my call. I'm if not, he's on the I, sideline, I think he probably disavow? will. I'm just a, I'm just a fan, guys. I don't know. I, I don't I don't give out tickets to the sideline. Will you disavow if Art Bryles on the sideline? Are you? Uh, I'll disavow. have to. I'll have to talk to Jeff Lebby and we'll. Okay. Uh, and he does, and he started following you on Twitter. So he did. Know. He yes. follows me on Twitter now. Yeah. And he you disavow? Me. Did you disavow our trials? Yes, I disavow what happened at Baylor. You disavow your coach's father-in-law. I disavow wow. what happened at Baylor. You went against the family. I disavow what happened at Baylor, guys. Can we cut that? Well, you, you guys are not disavowing Lebby? what happened to Baylor? No, I disavow. Oh, I disavow the whole family. Because when I disavow, I disavow what happened to Baylor, entire Browse family, whether yes. by marriage, by anything, disavow all of them. Anyway. Really? Yeah. Our Bryles is not welcome on the Michigan sideline. Our Bryles or the is Wisconsin a sideline. Or I don't know that you guys can say that with 100 percent certainty. Oh, I, I, I can. I'll personally kick him out. You're R. saying R. with 100 percent certainty that he'll never I'll be on the Michigan or the I'll, Wisconsin I'll, sideline. I'll okay. personally kick him out. Because Kendall Bryles is still in college football. He still has jobs. And Kendall Bryles also. You disavow your new head coach's father-in-law. That is not what I said at all. I disavow what happened at Baylor and whatever. I don't know everything. You don't disavow our Bryles. I disavow what happened under Art Bryles at Baylor. That's what I do. Not him. I disavow Art Bryles, but not his son-in-law. Mm. Yeah, his daughter might not have known anything. Yes, correct. You do disavow Art Bryles. I don't know. I the whole connection with Pete. We got to talk about the internet. You're not coming through right now, Dave. <laughs> but Jeff Levy, great hire. Jeff Levy's a fucking of, dog. A fucking of, dog. Outside and of we're the gonna Art score Bryles some connection. fucking points. Okay. Okay. We're scoring points. All right, Ev. Who's your dog? Mine, I've got a pick. There's a team obviously playing conference championship game that I think should be favored or not. It's UNLV. They've been great against number all year. They want to say 10 and 2 or 10 and 3. Uh, I'll take UNLV plus two and a half. Good team, right, Ev? Oh, no. I knew that was happening. Uh oh. I mean, you walked into that. Walked, I mean, that is, I mean, that's. Well, like, they've already beat the team, right, right Ev? Not like, what does that matter? What do you mean, what's that matter? I mean, they're good in the Mountain uh, West, sure. Some they're people, they're a very some people good just sat on this program all year. All Michigan hasn't played anybody now. We well, haven't. That's true. You didn't until us. You didn't. That's impact. Well, we beat the shit out of you. We beat well, you didn't beat the shit out of us. No. How many How many teams do we have? You and LV is a good team. I've been saying it all year. Yeah, they're a good G5, for sure. Uh, So my dog Probably beat you. Oh. My dog of the week, Dan. No. I I don't know where we stand on this. I know we were texting about this, but is yeah. new Texas A&M head coach Mike Elko, which I love the hire. I've been asking for Mike Elko for a long time. We go back on the podcast last year. I was begging him to come back to College Station. Do you think that it's a good hire? It's a good hire. I just I, the Mark Stoops thing was crazy to me, but uh, it, yeah, Texas A&M ended up with the guy. I guess they wanted. Casey. Yes. What? Why, why can't Texas A&M do anything normal? Like, yeah. What was that yeah. like? So fucking. 
It, it, so it's the, it's so it's, fucking weird. It's the war hymn. So it's like, that's been going on forever. It's just like the fight song. It's like what they That's do. what you say about everything. Well, no, but that's what that is. Like you're asking what the but song off every, is. Song off is. Off There's got to be just well, one guy like way, way back in the day who was just the biggest dweeb who just started all this First of all, shit. Like, like why'd you do that, dude? That, what you saw, they do every single game. The entire stadium does. It just looks. Oh, weird. I believe it. It just looks a lot weirder, I think, in one room, but it's, it's just the fight song. Yeah. It's just what they do every time. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, why would you be excited about Mike Elko over Mark Stoops? Mark Stoops has had more success in a better conference. Mike Elko has been at AM. and You want to talk about somebody who understands the culture, understands the traditions, understands oh, the yeah, expectations. That, that, that's fine. I, I just didn't like – Mark Stoops is a very good football coach, and for Texas A&M fans to be like, no, this is a bad that's hire. Fair. We don't – like, he, he's so much below, beneath us is crazy. When he's won more – he's won 10 games at Kentucky more times in the last, like, six years than A&M has won 10 games in the last 20. So that was the thing. I think Mike Elko is a great hire. I think he's going to be a very good hire for Texas A&M. Um, I'm happy for the Aggies. Thank you, man. Uh, but yeah, I, it was more the Mark Stoops shit was just like, what the hell is going on? And when I woke up on Sunday morning, like we were doing a podcast when it all happened. So when I woke up and saw you text me and I didn't see what you had said, I was like, oh shit, he's about to give me a hard time. No, Mike Elko's a good hire. He's, I mean, Duke, getting Duke to yeah. play that way is like, the Duke, you know, it's tough to do. So. Also, he uh, pays attention to what we do because we were DMing back and forth. He said, thanks for all the support. Glad to get the momentum going. So Mike Elko, listen, uh, nothing against you personally. You got to get a tailor. That was one of the worst fitting suits I've ever seen. I didn't see that. Oh my! Bad fitting suit. Oh my God! He looked like Bob uh, 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 Ben McAdoo when uh, huh. you remember that picture. Yeah. He just he's just a football guy. He just wants to come in and win games. Yeah. Very excited. Let's move to the proper picks presented by Proper Number Twelve Irish Whiskey, rich and smooth. Proper Number Twelve Irish Whiskey for every bottle sold. A donation is made to support our brave first responders. Order your bottle of Proper Number Twelve Irish Whiskey from Drizzly today. Big Cat, pour the roar. Let's Davis go. Davis absolutely just destroyed everybody this year. So, yep. We're all just in second place. Keep score. I am going to take my game of the year. Pour the roar. Proper Pour number the roar. twelve. Irish apple. Cheers to my game of the year. Let's hope. Knock on wood. We hit it. The over in Georgia, Alabama. Georgia, Alabama. We will be streaming it live. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm. I'm. Listen. When I do a game of the year, that means I'm betting the most I bet on a game, and. I will show up and I will give everything I have for this over. I'll be there with you. Yeah, I'm gonna fight my fucking dick off for this over. Ever is Rico gonna be here for that? No, I fuck no. no, fuck no. Oh, okay. Touch the nerve there. I All didn't right. say fuck no. I just said no. Okay, Dave. He's welcome if he wants to. Yeah, that's true. He's a good boy. <laughs> Dave, your proper number twelve pick. <sighs> I don't love the board here. Uh, I believe I had Miami of Ohio. I just always think that MAC championship. I always take the underdog. Uh, like I, they're always close. I'm going to take Miami of Ohio. Brandon. Friday night, uh, Washington's been disrespected. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody is on Oregon side, and that's fine. Oregon is good, but Washington is also good. Washington plus nine and a half. They're the dog. They're what? What is this? That's my proper pick. Proper pick. Okay, Ev. Uh, me and Dan are aligned. I love that over. I submitted it to Blotman last night about 20 minutes after. Dan tweeted it was his goatee. I'll be here on the stream willing to Let's with, go, Ev. Let's go, we're Ev. In the, we're in the trenches together. Let's fucking go. You, you, you're due, Ev. You, something good has to happen to you. Let's go, Ev. <laughs> we're going to put on our war paint. We're just going to fucking... I technically was retired. I'll be out of retirement for conference championships. It's it's uh, Game of the year means a lot to me, and it's it's going to take a lot of energy. It, it's like... It's I'm going to be rooting for you guys. Fight. I'll be on it. Thank I'll you, be on Dave. It. Thank you. Yeah, yep. it's a yep. prize fight. I, I, I use every last bit of energy. Like, I will be spent. I, I might actually bring an ice bucket. Just sit there. Yeah, just a just towel. Just like have Brandon be my I'm Jerry. Man. Have your lap dog. Yeah. Lap dog. Whoa, right. come on, lap dog. Let's come on. It's the lap dog. Uh, I'm gonna take Georgia minus six. I, I mean, I've been so bad at these. Last week, I just took how many times Dave was gonna call Ev fat on the stream. So, I'm just taking a pick for. Do I keep track of that? No, but I know that it was. I have originally said it was gonna be four and a half, and so it had to have hit. Had like, to have gone over. The over hit before I think the game was even yeah. started. Let's start with the, or let's go to the Viva La Hooters top 10. Head over to your local Hooters and tweet a picture of your wings with hashtag Viva La Hooters to win a trip to the national championship. We will also choose one person weekly to win a $50 gift card to the Barstool store. The girls are coming in and the 2024 Hooters calendar is now available for purchase at any location. So whether you're looking for the perfect Christmas gift for your friend, coworker, boss, or anybody, or you're just feeling extra merry and you want to have beautiful girls on a calendar, you can purchase that for the troops and Hooters will mail them overseas as well. So the Hooters loves the troops. The girls are over there, Ev. Those wings smell amazing. Oh, they smell incredibly. So I'm here with lovely Hooters girls. We've been tasting different wings 
all year each week. This week, original barbecue. Download the Hooters app and enter coupon code BARSTOOL23. $5 off your order of 15 or more. Valid at participating locations only. So check with your local Hooters. Original barbecue. It smells delicious. Tastes delicious. Barstool 23 $5 off your order of 15 or more. And they're holding up those amazing calendars as well. So make sure you buy those for your friends and then send them to the troops. Thank you, as always, to Hooters. Let's go to the communal top 10. So together, we voted Georgia, Michigan, Washington, Florida State, Oregon, Texas, Bama, OSU, Penn State, and Arizona. So Ohio State falling to eight in our communal mm -hmm. poll. Yep, that's where I had them. That's, I had them seven. I had them at eight, I believe. And I had Arizona at 10. I have, I have Arizona at 10. Yeah. Brandon, you have Arizona? I have Arizona at 10. I had Mizzou at nine. I guess I'm the only one to have Mizzou. I had LSU at nine. Jaden Daniels should win the Heisman. Mm -hmm. I could I not have Ohio State at seven, actually. Ooh. Yeah, that's what I have. See you. So any other any other qualms with that? I mean, obviously we'll figure out exactly like by the yeah. time we meet the next time we'll know what the playoffs look it's like. It's going to so. be very exciting to see how this all plays out. I, yeah, I'm I, I'm sure we'll have chaos, right? So it could be the cleanest ever, or it could be pure chaos. Yeah, it could literally be the cleanest ever with, with all four teams yeah. being undefeated, or yeah, we could have a real problem. Do you want chaos, Stan? Um, yeah, some. why not? Yeah, I want some, I want a little bit. I want I want it on Sunday when we're all sitting around watching, like to know that there's going to be something a little bit spicy. Uh, do you think there's going to be chaos? I don't. Okay. You think it's going to be just clean? I think it's going to be Michigan, Georgia, Florida State, Oregon. If Alabama beats Georgia, well, that's the chaos first. tipping yeah. point. But uh, yeah. yeah, I like I like Michigan, Georgia, Oregon. <laughs> oh no! I like Texas. I think Florida State's going to get beat. Okay. Okay. So next week we will be back for Army Navy, one of our favorite things that we do every single year. This year it is at Gillette in Foxborough. So we were going to be at the Rodman Ford, which is right on Route 1, at 1 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you come out to the Army Navy show, which is the, one of the coolest things we've ever been to in sports. So I know that um, I think that's not like a hot take by any stretch. Yes. Great, great show. So we will see you in Foxborough next week. Dave, anything else? No. Uh, no. Um. Excited for championship week. I'm locked in. I wish you guys could be there with me, but we can't all be there. So uh, you know, I'll, I'll be thinking of you guys. All right. Appreciate Big it. of you. We'll yeah. see you guys next week.